So, do you have have you practiced meditation before? Yeah, what type? Various. Various type. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, Miva told me you were living in, in Kathmandu or, or yeah, Nepal. In Nepal, in Australia. Yeah, so the, you must well, have done. Mostly, I guess, I've lived in Boda, so it's like Vajrayana. Mm -hmm. But I've done, I think, different kinds of yoga as well, so, yeah, experience, so. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So I want to know, according to you, when you hear the word meditation, what comes in the mind? Like, what? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think it's working on inner peace. Mm -hmm. Good. So both can be. So because I just want to know, just wanted to know this because sometimes people think meditation means you have to sit down and close your eyes and focus. Mm -hmm. Meditation is not like that. Meditation is something that you it's the state a state of mind. Right? So you can be meditating even now. So meditation means when you are doing anything without any distraction whatsoever. So whether you're listening to somebody or you're talking to somebody, you're eating food or even drinking or even smoking. You know why do we smoke or people smoke or drink? Why they are addicted? Because they are not meditating on it. So they really love it. They really love the smoking and drinking, but they don't really meditate on it. So if you heard of Osho, yeah, so his meditation were like this, that if, if you really love somebody, then be with, with them fully. Anything you do, do it fully. So when people start to smoke they, and they meditate, they realize that how they did before that they keep smoking because let's say I'm talking to you and then I'm smoking, so I'm not even aware of that I'm smoking. So what is doing, the nicotine is working on the body and then whatever it does. So it's not that only the cigarette is making you feel good, but it's, it's the whole environment, like whole event is doing. Okay. So meditation is something that uh, we practice. We practice in this way. This is like a car. You see, you took a taxi from your home to come here and now you, you are in the meditation hall, let's say like this. So, otherwise, um, before you reach that state, you need to have something, right? Like some, somebody who's driving you. So that's what we do. This technique, like you sit down and meditate. This is going to be like your car that is going to bring you to this place where you can be fully aware 24 hours. Like, okay? Um, what else? There are three things that should be remember when you're meditating because the, the, the dealing that we are doing here is with the mind. Okay? The mind has the tendency to jump from one object to another. Who is thinking is the mind. Yeah? So three uh, words that you need to remember or tell the mind which is positive, to be regular and determine. Why? I will tell you quickly about them. Because if you are determined, then you are not going to, because mind is always going to try to defeat you. Yeah? So whenever you sit down, let's say like now we are moving some time. Why do we do that? Like this? It's because our mind tells us that the body is not in a, like this body is not feeling in comfortable state, so change. And consequence, we move. Same thing when you are meditating or being aware of something, let, let's say you are studying. You are stud studying and then you are aware of it, but your mind wants to jump around and bring it to somewhere else. So that's why you get distracted all the time. So you, you can't do on one uh, focus on one uh, object, you are jumping around. So that's why you need to be determined. Regular. Regular means even you can do meditation or can't do, you have to make a setup. Like a day that you practice, uh, I mean the timing of the day, and you choose one time and you keep practicing every day. Same time, same amount, and do it 
whatever. If you sit down and you can't meditate, this is also fine. Because you know, sometimes we have habit. This creates a habit. Like the smoking, what is, or, or any, any habit is what? It's two things happening in there. One is habit and one is addiction. We don't have to create addiction here, but we want to create the habit of meditating. So whether you can do or can't do, you want to sit down and you want to work. And uh, then what will happen that when the time comes, like certain time comes, um, you do know like, okay, you, you were living in Nepal, right? right? So what was your schedule like in Nepal? Teaching. Right. Then when you move from there to Vietnam, how was it? No, it's a long story. I went to Portugal. Oh, okay. Okay. So what happens that this, you probably have noticed that when you are back home, let's say back home, yeah. and you have a routine, right? And then suddenly you move from there to another place, suddenly you lose the routine and you don't know what to do, right? Because at that moment, your mind is set to do that thing. And now you change it so you don't know what to do. The same thing if you meditate every day the same same timing, then at that moment your mind will be ready to meditate. It doesn't know anything else. I mean, of course, there are many things you can do, but this is how it it's begins. It sets up and then it's like time to meditate. Okay, now let's already but into it's like from like a regular practice, like an exercise, a mental exercise. Sometimes you need it more than others, right? If you're really stressed, like you add it more frequently in certain times. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because the more, you know, like five minutes of meditation can help you two hours of healing. So if, if you are stressed the whole day, so let's say whole day is 10 hours. So each five minute of meditation will help you two hours of stress. So that means 25 minutes you can meditate and that will be solved. And this is my own experience. Whatever I'm doing is my own experience. Because I've been through, I'm a human being, right? I have lived my life throughout, now I'm 32 or 33, something like that. And uh, throughout this time, I had a lot of time where uh, um, stress comes from some place. However, like many different areas we have, like friendship, relationship, parents, work, and other aspects. And so this is my own experience. And then positive. Positive and determined is similar. Positive is more like some people, many people, I have run many tons of retreats where people tell us, tell me like meditation is not for me. And I said, how? How do you know this? It's because they are not positive. They say, oh, I could only meditate for, I don't know, maybe five minutes and the rest of the time I couldn't meditate. I will tell you a very quick story about my two of the students that I was practicing with. So let's say I asked Miva, how is meditation? And she said, oh, in 20 minutes, I could only meditate for five minutes. And I said, congratulations. And then I asked you and you said only one minute, not even five minutes, just one minute. I said, congratulations to you too. Because scientifically, we have about 64,000 thoughts a day. Now, if you divide those 60, uh, the, the 10, let's say 10 hour and 64,000 thoughts, then you divide them into the minutes and then into the second. So let's see that maybe you have about 50 thoughts a minute or, or a second or a 10, 10 thought a second. Then you see 10 thought a second. That means how many is that? 60 by is it 600, right? Something like this. So 600 thought in one minute. Thought. thought, thinking, thoughts, thoughts. Ideas. I noticed that in the attention span, they say like adults is like 15 to 20 minutes if you have good concentration. Your attention span, so on top of having these thoughts coming in, your attention span also goes. So yeah, it's super hard. Yeah. So now if you are positive, then you will be like, wow, good. At least I could do this. So then it's always progressing. Right? It's, it's never like anything you do, you're always going to progress. You cannot, like if you do yoga, if you can do till here today, then of course you can go a little bit further tomorrow and then so on. And that's how they become pra uh, advanced practitioners. Yeah, 
What's your approach? Because there's so many ways and traditions of meditation. What's your approach when you traditional meditate? hatha yoga? No, but I'm saying when a thought comes in, uh -huh. what do you do with it? Do you ignore it or do you acknowledge it? Because no, there's you, different approaches. Yeah, to I become aware. You look at it and then yeah, what? because so when I look at it. Then this gives me two choices. Now, whether to react this way or this way. Now then, if I get two choices, then if you look and become aware, then you will have choice. But then you will have one more choice to go with one of them. So let's say anger. When anger comes, what happens? You act on it quickly and then there's fight. Now, if you become aware of that anger, oh, wait, I'm angry. Now, is the, in this moment, should I act as fighting or should I act as like not fighting? Now, if I fight, then what will happen? What kind of consequence is coming? This also I should become aware if I'm aware. And this, this choice will give me ability to do that. And if I don't do it, then what will happen? I will just react. And that means the because we have fight and flight mode. So we will always go with the fight, flight happens after if, if if your ego sees that this is not going to work then for flight otherwise mo mostly fight and that's why many fight happen and with your thoughts like when your thoughts come in when you're meditating oh in the meditation yeah because the, there's different approaches right like i've seen in like some Buddhist tradition and stuff like that yeah. And you have different ways of looking at it yeah so the way i do it is like the thought comes I become aware and I let go, but don't fight. Because if you tell, tell him, don't, don't think, that means you're going to think because I say, please, I beg you and you do this meditation and I will pay you one million dong each. Don't think of a white elephant, even though it doesn't exist, but still you have the, the white elephant image right there, right? So that's why we don't want to fight the mind. We don't want to say, don't think. We just say, okay, no problem. This thought come, okay, no problem, come back. So let's say we are we are going to do, we will do one technique called ma a mantra om. Yeah, so we will be chanting mantra om inside. And then suddenly I think, oh, this guy is making something and noise. Okay, no problem, come back, om, om. And then suddenly I hear something else or think about something else, that what I'm gonna do next and or whatever. Then, you just become aware, you became aware, but don't want to do even much further more. Yeah, because if I listen to this guy, then I could go like on and on, like, oh, this guy is making noise. Now my student is going to be disrupted and it's too much noisy and why they have to do it now, you know. So instead of all that, you just become aware that this noise, okay, no problem, come back home like this. Okay, yeah? no problem. Easy to say. But, uh, <laughs> this is very aggressive. This is practice. This what this what I said. That's why you have to be determined, positive, and regular. And even though it's difficult, you have to do. You have to try, and then you become advanced. It's like yoga. You do a pose, and you can't do, but you have to keep doing it without aggressing, like not pushing too much. So that's why you don't have to start with one hour. You start with ten minutes, and then you progressively go as long as you need. Yeah? Any question? So let's begin. So I will guide you. Sit in a comfortable position. Keep your back, neck, and spine straight. If your hands on the knee, you can bring them into chin mudra, thumb and index together. For a few moments, become aware of your body. Thank you. 
become aware of your body and adjust your body if you need to. Once you adjust your body, stay quiet physically. We're going to practice inner yoga. Bring awareness onto your breath. Become aware of your breath. The natural process of breathing. Try not to force to breathe in or out. Let it be natural. You simply become aware of the breath. When you breathe in, you should know you're breathing in. When you breathe out, you should know you're breathing out. If you find yourself wondering, simply become aware of that and redirect your awareness back on the breath awareness.
Breath awareness. When you breathe in, you should know you're breathing in. When you breathe out, you should know you're breathing out.
Om. Coordinate a small Om with each inhalation and exhalation. When you breathe in, Om. When you breathe out, Om. As if you're thinking of it.
now. Withdraw your mind from mantra awareness and bring your mind in front of your closed eyes. There are many points of light move, changing shapes and shadows. Become aware of them. Take a long deep breath and chant Aum. Slowly become aware of your body. and the environment. Begin to move your body. Rub your palm together. And bring your hands on your eyes and your face. Gently rub your face and slowly open your eyes. That was it. Okay. Yeah, you should, you should sit against the wall. Because sitting position, in meditation there are two things, mind and body. So if you conquer your body, that means 50% meditation is done. 50% is needed, the concentration. So that's why you can sit, doesn't matter, you don't have to sit like this, you can sit on the couch, against the wall, or the poster, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we did about 35 minutes. 35? 35. We did? Fast? I wonder it's 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah? So that's good. Oh, me? No. It's been, I've been, I don't think I have to say that it was very challenging. My body was okay, my body's calm. You just I know. felt the both of you very far. I didn't feel the movement or something. You were very far, only me. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so if you feel pain or something, then uh, also, you don't want to like neglect that, so then you can move, move the body, release the pain, even though it's better not to, but it's beginning, right? So before you go into inner yoga, you need to have your outer experience um, conquered or how to say like e easy, like released before you can go deeper. So if you feel pain, you become aware, 
And that can be your meditation too. Like when you, you know, like in Vipassana, what is Vipassana about? Vipassana is basically working on your pain. So you sit down and when you have pain, they will ask you to focus there. Because they, we understand, we all understand that when you tell him, tell the mind not to do something, it will do. And when you tell him not, you know what I mean? Like it always does oppose it. So when you tell your mind to be aware of the pain, you always want to run away from whatever. If you tell meditate and focus on this, then what it does, it, it goes somewhere else. So you say, okay, focus on the pain. And what is pain? It's mind uh, words that says pain. And, and then that with that word, we act. If you be pain, that means we're supposed to move or do something. Okay? There's two, again, I have like different approaches saying ease into the pain, breathe into the pain, and detach. And then there's some who would say, well, just readjust so you can feel comfortable. So there's different yeah, approaches, of right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you need to know what works for you. Yeah, which works too, yeah, sure. But this is one of them. So you become aware. Mm -hmm. And then when you become aware, you will run away from that. Mm -hmm. And then there's one more meditation for that. That that this, I think you will not find this anywhere. But I found it really working for some people. That when you have like a lot of thinking coming, you meditate. It's called thinking meditation. So you sit down and you tell your mind, think. But you have to think, when a thought comes, you have to think fully onto that. So let's say, what was your thought, for example? What were I the know, thoughts? What am I doing today and this week and, and the cats? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you, let's say you're thinking of a cat. So you take one cat that is coming into your mind and you think fully of, about that. You put your full focus on Full focus on that. And what will happen? Your mind will run away from this and you will find yourself in emptiness. That means you suddenly find, oh, what was I doing? Or what if you end up jumping to another thought? Because that's what was me. I was like on one, then I went on another. So if I focus on the cat, then something else will come? Yeah, something else will come, of course. So then you tell, okay, so now is this one? Think fully about that. Instantly, you will stop and then it will go to another one. But when you keep doing this way, because now you are telling to your mind to think, not your mind is thinking. You know what happened that, uh, do you have any precious thing with you? I will give you an example. Anything? Your phone? No, my phone's You have your phone? <laughs> my phone? Yeah, you have phone? Yeah. Give it to me. I did like, uh, this was Theravada Buddhism, mm -hmm. but the lady would say, the nun, she would say, I am thinking, I am thinking, I am walking, I am walking. Is that it? Like you're telling yourself what you're doing, what your body and your mind is doing? Can do because it's basically what is meditation when we use one technique is like that. You just put on one, one part, one thought or one whatever, and then our mind will always jump. And then you want to bring it because you want to bring it, not your mind is bringing it. So why, what, that's why I want to see this analysis. Whose phone is this? Yeah? What what will you do if I take this phone and I smash? What will you do? What I do? Yeah. I no, I, I always I smash down. What how will you say? You yeah, how will you react? What will you say to me? Why you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Stop doing that? Yeah. Why? I can do if I want. Okay. Now, because this is yours, so that's why you will tell me like that. Now, I take this cup and I throw it, will you say anything to me? Do you react anything? You will just think like, what, what is he doing? Right? You will not say stop it because you don't care. Why? Because this is yours and this is mine. Right? Now, if you want, if you really want, you take this phone and you can smash it also. If you really want. Of course, we're not going to do it. But if you want, you can do it. Right? Nobody's going to stop you. Why? Because this is yours. Now if, now tell me, in there, there's a mind, whose mind is that? Mind? Really? M mind. Yeah? Mind. Yeah, sure. Mind? Yeah? Whose mind is that? Mind. 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 <laughs> sure? This phone is yours, mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want to do with that phone. You can take it and smash it, or not. So if this mind is yours, then tell your mind to stop. 
why you can't do it? Because this is not your mind, but this mind, uh, you are of this mind. So that's what has happened. That normally is, is like, this is our mind. But now because of this life that we are living now, it's changed. And it's like, you are of the mind. So your mind tell you to do, do this, do that, go there, drink this, wear this, right? So what we're doing in meditation, like I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, or I'm talking like this, you're telling your mind to do, not that your mind is telling, that you saying I'm walking, but mind is saying cat. You know? Yeah, and I think also the intention behind that approach is also just to be in the moment. What am I doing now? Not later than yesterday. It's right now I am walking with my right foot. Yeah. Right foot. <laughs> but it's really like... It's a different approach, but I think different that, technique. Different approach technique. is same. Yeah, approach intention is the same. Yeah, but the technique is different, technique and is that's different. what I'm saying. I find there's different techniques of meditation. Sure. And you have to keep the one approach. Yeah. I that, just because of that, I created a retreat where I was not teaching one meditation, but I was teaching at least seven or eight techniques, okay. and then people can choose because according to me, what I think, we are like lock, and there is not one key can work for everybody same like meditation like my house can't be open with your key so we all need to have our own key right so that's the same way with meditation that you have to find what is the meditation key for you but you in your retreats you can't you're inspired by different traditions like is that when you offer these different uh, techniques mm -hmm. what do you mean by tradition well different schools different Houses of tradition, like there's different, right? Mm, different. I think, I don't know, like there's no di different uh, tradition. It's like I studied them and then I took the essence of it and I put into. And uh, the technique is basically all the same. The technique is basically an art. You can create a technique if you know. If you are artistic, you can create a technique. And so, technique doesn't really matter, but because there are so many different people. There are people that uh, have different environment living. They work with different people. Their background is different. Their parents react different to them. All of them is creating them. And that's why a different technique may work. So some people, easy to sit down and just do what it, whatever technique and it's working for them. But for some people, they can't sit. So they have to do walking meditation. So that's why there's walking meditation. Like so on. No, but technique is like, some is just you detach from everything. Some is you focus on your thoughts. Some is visualization, so, right? Like the Buddha or yeah. a goddess or whatever. And then some is you, you do a mantra in your head. That's technique. So yeah. I've learned a million of them. Yeah. And you have to find the one that works. For exactly. You. So I'm saying like you're inspired by what when you say, I offer my students many techniques. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just curious to know like, did you just focus on Hatha Yoga for all these different things that you offer? Or? The thing is that I don't want to, you know, like call one word that is from this, from this technique uh, or tradition, this from this tradition. Basically, I want to call it a whole as wisdom, right? So wisdom doesn't have a name. Wisdom is wisdom. It's not Buddhism wisdom or Christian wisdom, right? It's just the wisdom like knowledge. And now where it comes from, I don't know. Like what I want to call it, I don't know also. No, but you said you offer different techniques. So yes. What are the different techniques? There's walking, there's, yeah, there's like sitting. Sitting there's and in, in the sitting can be many different because uh, like for example, this one was oh, one of the technique, right? Yeah. Then another technique would be just to chant the mantra but without uh, aware of the breathing. Okay. You probably have done if you have done millions. You probably have done all of the one I'm teaching. Uh, or other one would be like to eat, but fully up with full awareness. Yeah. One is with silence and one is thinking to so think. The more you think, you're fully aware of that thinking. And what else? And also, you know, when you meditate, the best thing I found in meditation is that you can create. You know, so that's also meditation. That's why I call scientists the best meditator. That they have a word 
and then they can form this in, into action, like in reality. Like, so they thought, oh, we can fly. The thought, right? So thought is really amazing. Thought is not good. So no shutdown of the thought. Thought is good. But as soon as they are productive, if they are not productive and they're making you away from the production, so like let's say you want to create a movie or are working on something, but your thoughts are taking you away from that, then they are bad. So then you want to learn to come into that production, like so that you can do what you're doing. But thoughts are not bad. Thoughts are really amazing. Because of thought, we are all connected, right? Otherwise, we would not be sitting together right now. So in my meditation, a lot of time, I get a lot of different techniques. Like I'm meditating and I, I get different people, different thoughts. They talk about the different question they came. And that came into my mind, of course, it will come. And then I would find maybe a technique on that. So this is really good also. A lot of like yoga video I made is also I thought inside the meditation and then I put them into like a video. So so it's productive. I like that. Because some things like some forms don't work, you know, and I, I just I try to take on what is more effective for me on one day. So what is effective for you? No, but like you were saying, like uh, some things I just I can't sit, you know, or I would prefer a walking meditation, or some days I'm a little bit more fatigued and my mind is more rested, so I can actually sit for a while and just and sometimes. I'm tired but distracted, so then I use a mantra in my yeah. mind. Yeah, so that's good. Then you should know a few. Uh, well, because I did a lot of Kundalini yoga and I like Satnam. It works for me. I learned, I was taught Satnam is truth, is my name. So it's it's something just, it worked for me. And this is powerful too. And, and then the only thing that people Or there's another one, Soham. Yeah. Soham, it, it means I am what I am, or I am that I am. Soham. Yeah, we used to play that mantra. Like, Soham. Yeah, the song, like the actual melody, uh -huh. is very nice. And then you can think like, no, that's sad. Can you memorize the text for this? Oh, well, no, it's just repetitive. It's this, it's one it's, word. It's, yeah, it's one word. Yeah. I mean, if you do it, and I like, teach you, they explain the meaning. So you're connected to the meaning and you know why they're saying it. Because, like, some teachers, they say, Okay, we're gonna do this mantra, and they don't explain the meaning, so there's no relevance to you. Mm. So I'm just saying, I've learned the ones that are that work for me because they're powerful, right? Like the they say that uh, the Sanskrit words they're they're powerful because they connect to meridian points from yeah. the brain, so you're wow. stimulating yeah. different parts of the brain. So one moment you could be totally depressed, you use the mantra, and then you've been. Like Om, Om. If you feel depressed or stressed, you do ten Om loud or or in loud more effective, and you will see stress gone. Om. Do you know what is the meaning of Om? Well, I think it's just the, the sound of the universe. Yes. Human. Yes. Many. Yeah. It has so many. many. So Om is formed with A U M. Oh. So it's it's defining the circle of life, life, uh, birth, life, and death. Om. You see the the way the rises, the sound is like Om. Death, and begin again. Om. So, so everything is is that you know the cycle of 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 worlds basically. Japanese alphabet starts from A to M, so it's beginning and ends up. Many statue of Buddha has a uh, form of the lips. Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. It's really simple. Birth and death. Yes, yes. So it's the same thing. There's even the energy three type. You see, there's a positive energy, energy, there's hectic energy, and then there's negative energy. So, Om. There's day in the same morning, day, and the night. Everything is three. Everything is three. No, but even around the world, like all, like you say, all religions, there's this triad of everything. Yeah. Everything is three. So that's Om. We are also three. Yeah, it's all in a symbol. There's like a three, right? Three word, yeah. It's made of 
So it's like U, then it's uh, this is A, this is U, and then this is M. So it's so like you, yeah, Sanskrit. Have it like this. Oh, that doesn't matter. It's just like style. So basically, three words are one. Mm -hmm. This can be like this. Mm -hmm. This can be many different forms. It depends yeah, on the like writing. The own, I, I found like a, like an image. They had own in different languages. Ah, yeah. Like it's it's used. Yeah. Right? In the the own Mani Padme home, for example, Tibetan they have, and uh, we have in India, and also what else? They have in many. Okay. Just even just the writing, not even different. The yeah, yeah, they have the different ways of writing yeah. own according to the. Oh, ah, yeah. The to the, the letter, yeah. Yeah, culture. Yeah. Like, like, it's really interesting. Yeah, so this is I'm showing you Sanskrit. I don't know Tibetan. I know only Sanskrit. It's a little bit different. Uh, and then they were saying even within India, like they have the different dialects and they have their own writing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. they had different. Where are you from? Central India. Central India, but my uh, writing is similar to Hindi. But where in Central India? And Popal. Is that in Maharashtra? No, Madhya Pradesh. So from Maharashtra, oh. you go north. Oh, okay. okay. There was a um, very, very big disaster in 1984. Do you know? Union Carbide? No? From the company from uh, New York, I think, or America somewhere. 